Have you ever thought about that? How did he do it? Especially for a biblical Unitarian, someone who is not a Jesus is God person. So if Jesus was not God, if Jesus was a human being, totally, fully, obviously special because of the way he was created, but how then did this human being, you know, the the old uh, slur that he was a mere man, right? That's the slur. It's really a slur to me anyway, that, well, you just believe in a mere man. Well, no, this was obviously a specially created human being, just like, guess who? The first Adam. So if he's the second Adam, how is he anything but a human being? This might sound simple, but this would be my answer to that, which is, I think, a biblical answer, because he chose to obey God. As simple as that. He had the Holy Spirit to empower him. You know, many people, even in the Old Testament, it talks about people having the Spirit of God as well. Uh, we have the great things they did. Joshua stopped the sun. The story there in Joshua 1, I believe, chapter 1, says that God never did that with any other human being. And he didn't. God didn't lie about that. He didn't. No one else stopped the sun, not even Jesus. So, yes, the Holy Spirit is obviously prominent in the ministry of Jesus. But is that really how you keep yourself sinless? I don't think so. I, in my eyes, Jesus simply chose to obey God. And like Abraham or Abraham and Moses before him, they did it because they believed God. They had faith, right? Believe equals faith. I found this interesting section in Hebrews 11, the famous faith chapter, right? All the examples of faith we have there. And in verses uh, 23 forward, in reference to Moses, the writer says, it was faith that made Moses refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose, Moses chose to be mistreated with God's people rather than enjoy the temporary pleasures of sin. Think about that. That's interesting. Because that's what Jesus did. A man who said to himself, no, I'm going to obey God because... I believe God. I believe God will do what he said he will do for me. I also love Isaiah 50, the famous cycle, so-called, of the suffering servant. In verse 7 of Isaiah 50, the writer says that the suffering servant will say, I have set my face like flint because I know I will not be put to shame. That's faith. That's believing God, believing that you will not be ashamed if you do what God says. Let's also look at Job, another suffering servant figure, right? In Job 22, one of the friends of Job, remember the friends are always counseling him, advising him as the poor guy is going through hell, literally. I mean, he loses all his children, he loses his wealth and so on. It says, so obey and submit, says his friend. Obey and submit to God in order to be at peace. In this way, good will come to you. Do what God teaches. Put his words in your mind. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So clean up your life. So this is an opportunity for us to come to God through his Son, confess our sins. We are battling with sin every day. We're battling with trials and tribulations. As we know here, many of us are sick and many of us need healing. So we pray for that all the time. I'm always thinking about you guys. And the friend goes on to say to Job, Job in Job 22, God brings down the proud and saves the humble. Listen to this. Even sinners will be rescued because your hands are clean. So if we try and remain clean, we try and remain sinless, quote unquote, even today we can strive towards that. We can even save sinners. Isn't that incredible? Well, we were sinners ourselves once upon a time, and it took maybe another Christian to help us 